a Buffalo Fanatics Draft Prospect Exclusive. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the Buffalo Fanatics War Room. My name is Steve Mathis, co-host of the Air Raid Hour, and I am here with Michael Strawn, wide receiver from the University of Charleston. How are you doing today, Mike? I'm doing pretty good. I appreciate you having me. Hey, I appreciate you for taking the time to sit down with us. I'm sure you're busy with this uh, all this pre-draft stuff you're doing. I'm sure you're, you're you're currently training and getting ready for the NFL. Am I right? Yes, definitely. It's definitely a process, and you know, it's something that I'm embracing, and you know, I'm loving it. Awesome. I just want to dive right in because I'm not gonna lie. I've shared a couple of your your highlights on my Twitter account, and people are absolutely infatuated with uh, some of your some of your highlights. I mean, you are six foot five, two hundred twenty five pounds. You ran a four four six forty, eighty five inch wingspan, and you caught nineteen touchdowns last season at Charleston. Clearly, you have all of the physical tools. And do you think, like, when it's all said and done, like five, ten years from now, people are going to be looking at you uh, the way they're currently looking at the Jamar Chases and Devonte Smiths and, and Jalen Waddles of the world? Uh, yeah, definitely. I feel like I'm the best you know, in this draft class, um, you know, with the low level of exposure with me coming from a smaller school, you know, that platform is kind of, you know, on the low level for me, mm -hmm. but, you know, I'll be able to show it when my time comes. What kind of, uh, what kind of player do you think the Buffalo Bills would be getting uh, if they drafted you? You would just be, you know, they would just be overall getting a playmaker. You know, if you want a playmaker, then I'm that, you know, I'm that special player that they're looking for. You know, I'm going to come in and be consistent. I'm going to make plays. I'm going to help the team. You know, I'm going to, you know, bring up the best potential in the ones around me. So my teammates, my coaches, you know, I, overall, you know, I just want to win a Super Bowl. You know, mm -hmm. that's what we're playing for. And that's what we're practicing for every day, you know, for the for the weeks of the game. So they have it. Yeah, you, you spoke earlier about like making some of the or I spoke earlier, I should say, about some of those highlight plays that really draw people's attention. And I watch a ton of your highlights in the. The ball floats in the air, man. It's, you're almost like a basketball player. You just go up and get it. What what goes through your mind when you see that ball up in the air and it's coming at you? Like what what goes through a player's mind when or a receiver's well, mind when that ball's in the air? Right. Well, when the ball is in the air, that's the only that should be your only focus. And for me, you know, that's that's my only focus. When the ball is in the air, I want to attack it every time. You know, I want to get it before anybody else get it. And you know, with me, I use my strengths to my advantage. So my size, my speed. You know, my football awareness, I use all of that to my advantage. So when I put all of that together, you know, it's just, it just really just brings out the best of me. And kind of for me, those things come natural. Uh, you mentioned your, your, your size and your speed. In talking to NFL personnel during this pre-draft process, where have they talked about envisioning you on the football field? Do they envision you like outside as like an X receiver? Do they envision you as sort of like a big slot type of player? Where, where have they sort of had conversations about where they want to pl you, play you in the NFL? Well, for, for me, you know, we, we haven't really got that deep into it yet. You know, I just had to really show them what my speed was like. You know, they hear, you know, they hear it time to time from different people and they see it all over social media. But now I was able to really put out a good time in the 40 and now they see my speed is there. So, you know, you, I'm a versatile player. You can use me at any spot on the field. You know, I, whatever the team needs, I'm that type of guy. You know, I'm ready to fulfill whatever they need. Mm -hmm. You know, I I hate to ask this question, but I know like every time I put up a video of like a six foot five, six foot six, six receiver who's as big as you are, like a million comments in my comment section are always asking this question. So I'm going to ask it, even though I don't personally, I'm not a fan of it. Has anyone talked to you about like maybe putting on 15 pounds and transitioning to tight end? Or do they see you strictly as a wide receiver? For the most part, teams see me strictly as a receiver. You know, it's been a, it's been little talks, but not much mm -hmm. about me, you know, putting on a few pounds. But, you know, I, I'm pretty comfortable playing receiver and I'm comfortable, you know, at the weight and height that I'm at. So, you know, for most teams, you know, they want to, you know, bring up the, you know, they want me to be comfortable where I'm at. And that's mm -hmm. where I'm comfortable being. But whatever it takes for me to, you know, bring the team, you know, a win, or help the team in any type of way, I'm willing to do. Awesome. We uh, um, There's a couple of receivers in Buffalo. Well, I should say more than a couple. Yep. Stefan Diggs, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders. What do you know about those guys' games? And if you were drafted by the Buffalo Bills, 
what, what would you try to take? Uh, what would you try to learn from those three guys? Well, I have so much respect, you know, for those receivers there. And, you know, I'll be able, you know, I'll be able to come in and just learn from them and, you know, see what they do on a daily basis. You know, how they keep such a how they keep, you know, such a such a high level of production, you know, for the, those amount of years. And, you know, what they do on and off the field It's just it would just be, you know, like a learning experience for me coming in under those guys. You know, and I, and I feel like I could add so much value to a team, you know, especially with those guys being there. You know, just imagine, you know, with me, Stefan Diggs and Beasley on the field at one time, you know, that would be unstoppable, mm-hmm. you know. So it's just for me coming in and learning under those veteran guys. When you, like, are, you know, preparing yourself and you're trying to get better and improve your game, do you watch film of pro receivers? And if so... Who are some of the receivers that you try to model your game after? I 100% watch film and I keep up to date with most of the receivers, you know, in the, in the league today and in the past. But the receivers that I model my, you know, the receivers that I study, I should say, is, you know, probably Calvin Johnson. I watch him the most out of all receivers. He, you know, I, I watch him the most because he he kind of reminds me of me. You know, when I watch his college tape and I watch his highlights, I, I literally see myself in, in a way. So, yeah. you know, I study his game a lot. I'm sure that, like, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna I'm, tonight. I'm gonna clip that of you comparing yourself to Calvin Johnson, right? And I guarantee you, it's gonna blow up the internet tonight because people are gonna, people are gonna be absolutely infatuated with the with that comp. Right. Um, I, I want to throw a couple of of terms at you because in Buffalo we have a coach named Sean McDermott, yeah, and he is very much a culture guy, and he uses okay. words like process, trust the process, respect the process. And he has a philosophy called the growth mindset. Have you ever heard those terms before? And what sort of buzzwords are used by your head coach at Charleston? Yeah, um, I've definitely heard those term those terms before. But you know, with, with with me being at Charleston, they always preach to us. You know, nothing comes, nothing great comes overnight. You know, it's all a process. You know, it, it's going to take work to get to where you want to go. So for for me, you know, coming from coming from the Bahamas. That, that's mm-hmm. where I'm originally from. It took it took a lot of years and a lot of dedication and and discipline for me to get to this point, and I'm still going strong. So, yeah, yeah. Let, let let's 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 get into that because you mentioned you came from the Bahamas. You were born in the Bahamas. You went to Lynchburg Christian Academy for high school, the alma mater of NFL players like Rashad Jennings and and Bobby Massey. Yeah. So you at, at six foot five, two hundred twenty five pounds, running that four four six forty. How did you end up at, at Charleston? Why? How? Why did you not end up at maybe? No offense to Charleston. How did you not end up at a at a bigger, you know, NCAA football program? Well, for, for me, you know, coming when when I was in when I was at Liberty Christian Academy, I wanted to sign with a school that would allow mm-hmm. me to play the sport that I love, which is football. But also, you know, I would, you know, I wanted to go to a school that would also allow me to run track, and because I was also a track runner in high school too, and track help me with all of the speed that I have. And I wanted to, you know, keep up with it so that I'll be able to, you know, for this time today. You know, I think Buffalo would be a perfect landing spot for you too, because you mentioned that you went to the university of Charleston, sort of some lower level competition. We have a quarterback here in Buffalo. I don't know if you have a chance to see him play some football in, in Josh Allen. He came from Wyoming with, while it's still like an FCS school, while it's still division one, You know, he came from that small school background. He had to go the JUCO route. You know, he's the kind of guy who elevated his game, and a lot of people had doubts about him making that transition to the NFL. I mean, he was one of the most picked-apart players in the pre-draft process. I think that you two could really get along, uh, and he could really help you on the journey of going from that lower-level competition into the NFL. Have you had a chance to watch Josh Allen or understand his Yeah, I I watch him a lot, too. I respect his game, and he – he is, is, is amazing to see how much he's developed over the years, you know, mm-hmm. and how he is such a, a, a better player now than what he was prior. But, you know, for me, tal- talent is everywhere. You know, people get caught up in this, in this, you know, lower level talent, D1, D2, D3. But when I think, for me in my situation, when I think about guys like Jerry Rice, Tyreek Hill, Adam Thielen, Andre Reid, who, who, who came from small schools, who was, you know, putting on a show in the NFL, um, you know, that motivates me and, you know, it shows you that talent is everywhere. If a person has talent, then it shouldn't, it shouldn't really matter. Yeah. The Buffalo Bills right now, we have two players, uh, who came from England. Uh, we have two players who came out go. of the, 
the uh, the uh, the uh, there's this program they have with English football players, and we got Christian Wade, a running back, and we just signed uh, FA Obata to the defensive end. So, yep. I mean, you're right. If you got the talent, it you know you're you're gonna make it in this league. Speaking of making it in this league, you know, w- when you're having these discussions with you know scouts or front offices or coaches, whomever it is you have conversations with in this pre-draft process. Do they see you as a guy who's going to immediately step in uh, onto their football team and be an impact player? Or do they talk to you more about being like a practice squad developmental guy? And where do you think you belong? Do you think that you can day one make an impact in the National Football League? I feel that I can day, from day one make an impact. You know, I don't I don't let them get to the point where they're saying, oh, you know, we want to come in, de- you know, develop you, make you a practice squad player. I don't I don't let them get to that point because that's not my mindset. I feel like if a team is invested in me, you know, I should be able to perform. And from day from day one, I want you know, I want them to get their money's worth out of me. You know, if they're invested in me, then I want to come in and perform and be a be a great asset to the team. You know, speaking of, speaking of being an asset to the team, uh, for, I, I've heard through the grapevine a couple of people here and there saying you've had conversations with the Buffalo Bills. Is that in fact true that the Buffalo Bills have been in contact with you? Yeah, we we have been talking. How how does that go? Sort of like in the COVID, like who reaches out to you? Is it an area scout? Is it a member of the coaching staff? Who have you been talking to with with, with the Buffalo Bills? And like, how many times are they in contact with you? Is it like a like a weekly thing? Is it like a check in every month? Like, how does that all work? Most of the time, as a scout, you know, they're checking you from time to time. Mm-hmm. You know, see how you're doing. They want to, you know, get to know you more. That's how it is. You know, it's just getting to know the player, where they come from, their background you know, their, their process. That's basically what I'm going through right now and talking to these teams is, you know, just telling them more about myself because they already know what, what I could do on the field. You know, you mm-hmm. see it on the tape. They see me in person on my pro day. So now it's just more getting to know me as a person. Ha- has any team gone so far as to, like, have a wide receiver coach contact you or an offensive coordinator contact you and, like, start talking the X's and O's and the schemes and things like that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I was able to talk to – to a few, you know, coaches, and we, we really get deep in the game and we talk about mm-hmm. the game. And that's that's something, you know, that comes with this process is, you know, they want to see how well you know the game, what your football awareness is like, your knowledge of the game. So I've had a few talks with that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you want to, like, reveal this. It's too much information or anything like that. But have you had conversations with Bills wide receivers coach Chad Hall or officer coordinator Brian Dable? Uh, no. No? no? Okay. No. Um, and, like, when these guys talk to you, like, you mentioned they break down the X's and O's and all that stuff. Do they ever talk to you about like where they think you need to improve your game? Do they talk to you about like where you fit? Like, like what what is what are some of those con- uh, like those those uh, those conversations like little like a little bit more in depth? Well, I'm that's something that's something about. yeah. That's something that I ask. You know, mm-hmm. whenever I'm having those conversations, I literally would ask. You know, where do you think that I can improve? You know, in my game during the off season, so I'll be able to work on it. And, you know, they would tell me, oh, this, that, the next, you know, and that's something I'll be able to work on, you know, in my training. So mm-hmm. we do have those those talks because it's something that I like to ask and I like to get a different perspective, 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 sorry, on oh, who is thinking of me. Um, what is it? Uh, well, there was one more question I wanted to ask you about these these interviews. Oh, it's, I've always been curious about this because, like, you are probably sitting there on pins and needles. On draft, on draft day, you're going to be like, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? What teams want me? What teams want to take me? Does a team ever flat out come out and say like, yeah, we're looking at you in the fourth round? Or, you know, we're looking at you in the seventh round? Like, do they come uh, out and tell for you? For the most part, they would say, for the most part, they would go as far as to say you're on our, dra- you're on our draft board. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, they don't really tell you where, you know, where you're going to go, you know, because you never know. You know, they could say one thing and something else happened on draft day. You just never know. Yeah. Something, you know, that they that they sort of keep to themselves. But they let you know through certain words that they say, you know, how mm-hmm. interested, you know, how interested they are in you. Yeah. And I, and I can imagine like teams that are sending their offensive coordinator to have a conversation with you or sending a, a quarterback's coach or a wide receivers coach are probably more interested than those who are sending a scout. Like, how does your agent deal with that, too? Because like, obviously you you're probably curious. You probably know where you want to be drafted. I think the common like person like me, who's looking at the draft from a fan perspective or like a, like an outsider perspective, we probably no offense. We probably didn't know who you were until three or four weeks ago. Right. when We started seeing university of Charleston highlights. 
So I think we just assume that you're probably going to be drafted somewhere in day three. Do you think there's a possibility that you could hear your name called relatively early in the draft and, and shock some people? I believe 100%, without a doubt, that I will go higher than day three. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like if a team doesn't get me higher than day three, they would be dumb because I feel like I'm that special player that every team is looking for in this draft. And that's, you know, that's just something that I show. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm humble about it, but mm -hmm. I just, you know, I believe in myself and I believe, you know, yeah. I have a big heart. I come from a small school, but I have a big heart. So there you have it. That, I mean, that, that's awesome. We have a, we have another host here at the Buffalo Fanatics. He's sort of the main host. His name is Rico. And he always tells people like, Hey, like, you know, you can be as humble as you want, but if you're going to say something like say it with your chest. And I love how you said it with your chest right there. Definitely. Like you were confident in yourself and you know, exactly, um, you know, what you want to do once you get to the national football league. So dude, yeah. I, I would be thrilled that the Buffalo bills drafted you because I'm, I'm loving this confidence right now. Absolutely loving it. Uh, speaking of Buffalo, I always like to, to end these shows with a little bit of Buffalo trivia. So I'm going to, you know, tr try to try to test your knowledge of the city of Buffalo. Do you know anything? Ooh, at all? I anything would, at I all wouldn't advise Buffalo? you to do that. I've never been to Buffalo. Never so been? I don't, I don't know that much <laughs> really about it. So I What's probably the, wouldn't do good so, trivia. So, so you were, you were born in the Bahamas and yep. you went to school in, in Virginia, high school in Virginia and then college in Charleston. What's the furthest North you've ever been? I've been to New York, actually. Um, I've, I've been to New York in in the city area, and that's mm -hmm. I would say that's the furthest I've been. All right, so New York City. That's the game I like to play. That's the game I like to play with with the draft prospects I have on, and the game is called "How Far Do You Think Buffalo, New York, Is from New York City?" So, if you had to take a guess, how many hours Buffalo was away from New York City? How many five. hours do you think it would be? Five. What? Ooh, five. close. Six hours. I had someone on, I had, uh, I had, um, the Amador, uh, Lenore from Oregon on yesterday Okay. and he guessed two. So you were closer than him. Okay. Uh, I, I, I felt like it was pretty far. I just didn't know exactly <laughs> what the amount of hours was. Yeah. And that's yeah. the other, that's the other game I like to play with people. It's like, what's closer to Buffalo, New York city or this place. So what do you think is closer to Buffalo, Toronto or New York city? Hmm. A, that's a good question. Uh, I want to, I want to say, Toronto. You are correct. Toronto is actually yeah. only one hour, one hour from Buffalo. Yeah. So if you get drafted by the Bills, you're gonna have to get that passport, go over the bridge, and uh, and check out Niagara Falls and stuff because it's really? only about one hour away. I didn't yeah. know it was that close. Oh wow. yeah. I grew up, I grew up on Grand Island, New York, which is right between Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Okay. So from downtown Buffalo, Niagara Falls is about a twenty minute drive, and uh, okay. Toronto's about an hour. How about this one? What's closer to Buffalo, Pittsburgh or New York City? New York City. Ooh, Pittsburgh, four hours. Really? Yep. Man. How about how about this one? This one's kind of a trick question. Detroit or New York City? What's closer to Buffalo? Detroit or New York City? <laughs> uh, Detroit? I'm going to give that one to you because technically – if you drive in the continental United States, they're both six hours. But okay, is, so, there, so it's kind of it's kind of even. Yeah, it's even, but there is a shortcut through Canada, which makes it a four-hour drive. But Canada is currently closed, so no oh. one can go through Canada right now. Really, that's uh, no close. Yeah, the border up north is closed. You can't get into Canada from the United States wow. okay. without a special uh, visa. Uh, okay, because gotcha. of COVID. How about this one, Philly or New York City? Uh, New York City. Hi, they're both six hours away. So if you ever want wow. to catch a basketball game, you get you can choose between the Sixers and the Knicks, and they're both the same. And same they're both the same. Way. That's crazy. <laughs> How about Washington D.C. and New York City? New York City. Yep, by by only one hour though. D.C. Oh, seven, okay. New York City is six. Okay. All right, you did much more. You did much better than Diamador. So, okay. uh, <laughs> kudos cool. to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you uh, spending some of your valuable time with me today. Do you have any social media you want to share or anything of that? Uh, I have Instagram. My Instagram is Mike underscore Playmaker. I like, I like it. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. That's the same with my Twitter. So, it, Twitter and Instagram is the same. Or awesome. you can, so, yep. 
Perfect. So, ladies and gentlemen, follow Mike Strawn on Instagram and Twitter, Mike underscore Playmaker. Hopefully, he will be coming to Buffalo to light things up and, and score 19 touchdowns a year. I think if you come to Buffalo, I, I think 19 has got to be the bar, right? 19 is the bar. I have to, I, you know, I'm the type of <laughs> person, I, I have to break my record. Yeah. You know, so, I'm definitely going to get higher than my record. Awesome. I, I really appreciate you taking the time, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.